Now, we were sent this story by a viewer, and it's about a couple of brothers in Bogota, Tennessee, who saved their mother's home from being washed away by the flooding river. It says in the report that they moved heaven and earth to save their mother's home. Well, actually, just earth, with the aid of a big digger. During very heavy rainfall, the Abayan River burst its banks and flooded the surrounding farmland. Not an unusual occurrence in that part of the world. So the brothers jumped in their digger and they built a levee around their mother's home. Nine foot high at the back, six feet at the front. And being a friendly kind of place, they were helped by the neighbours who brought plastic sheeting and old tyres and all sorts of other things to reinforce the levee and stop the water soaking through and washing the earth away. <laughs> Now, the American people are not new to building levees. They've been doing it for many years, and it held for seven nights and seven days against the flood water. That sounds almost biblical. Well, being in the Bible Belt, they probably did do a fair amount of praying as well. But whatever they did, it worked. I said that some American people are good at building levees, but, you know, they didn't invent it. Levees have been built for hmm, at least 5,000 years. The Mesopotamians, they built levees to protect their land from being flooded by the Tigris and the Euphrates. And then even the ancient Egyptians were at it. They built levees along the Nile to protect the surrounding land from being flooded so that they could grow corn. So levees, dikes, dams, barrages, whatever you want to call them, are really about making use of marginal land. And if you want to see a great example of that, look no further than the Netherlands. We've all heard the story of the little boy that stuck his finger in the dike to save his village from being flooded. Oddly enough, they don't seem to tell that story anymore. Now, looking at these pictures of what those brothers achieved, you may wonder how it was that that mound of earth held back miles miles and miles of water. When I was at college learning to be a plumber, one of the things we had to learn, the fact that water pressure is proportional to height. Now, it doesn't really matter, as the lecturer explained to us, whether you've got Lake Windermere behind that wall or whether you've just got a swimming pool because the water pressure on the wall is directly proportional to the height or the depth of the water. How far up the wall the water comes. It did take me quite a while to get my head around it. All that water pushing on that wall must have a bearing but apparently not because of that it allows people to calculate with great accuracy just how strong a dam has to be once they know the height of the water they can calculate the pressure on the, the dam wall so right at the top of the dam wall there's very little pressure and as you go deeper you get a great deal more pressure where would you reasonably expect, because you are reasonable people, the greatest pressure to be on that damn wall? Here's your water going back, doesn't matter how far, as we've already said, but there is pressure, constant pressure on that wall. We know that it's going to be more or less zero at the top. We can calculate the pressure on that damn wall. And if it's zero there, you would expect it to be at the maximum there. So let's just call this 10. So you would expect five to be there because it's a consistent force and because the weight of the water is the same. But in actual fact, the pressure on that damn wall is about two thirds of the way down. So the maximum pressure on that damn wall is not there, but there, it will take a structural engineer, and I think John Craner might <laughs> write in with the answer, to tell us exactly why that happens. But whatever happens, that damn wall needs to be thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. That would allow for that extra pressure on the wall. The weight of the wall is a large factor in how that resists the pressure of water. Now, without going into algebra, let's just assume that what they're telling us is true and that we can hold back that water with a weight of concrete, but we could also do it with water. And that is what they do in temporary flood defences. They will often build a container held maybe by polythene or something like that. And before this water starts to act on this temporary flood defence, if they fill that with water, the weight of water is the same here as it is there, because we've already said that what's happening, it doesn't make any difference how much volume we've got. The weight of water is the same at the 
bottom is same as at the top so we can actually use water to hold back water how clever is that everything changes when this water is moving and that's why we've seen pictures of flood waters washing away houses whole villages because once you get velocity a raging torrent racing down towards your house then i'm afraid that those brothers in bogota wouldn't stand a chance of holding that back with their levy i don't want to tell those brothers how to build a levy because i've never actually built one in my life this is their mum's house and they built a wall all the way around it straight sides so there's a wall there wall there all the way around with the earth with the water pushing against it with the water pushing against it and it held up because they did a good job what they could have done which would have been way better make their levy circular when you've got the pressure pushing against there pressure pushing against there you've got the pressure pushing there you've effectively got an arch you're compressing that and the only way that can break through is if it could find a breach in it but because it's all being pushed together those forces are acting equally all the way around so next time brothers if you're trying to protect your mum's house you might want to consider a circular approach to the problem so you often see this principle being used in rivers where you might have a river going down like that and you might want to build a dam across it but instead of building the dam with a straight line like that what they do is they arch the dam like that the forces on an arch are being spread around to the edges so you've got to make sure that what you do at the edge is a massive great reinforcement there and there and you also want to make sure that that is thicker at the bottom so if you were looking sideways onto it you would want to see that going like that but if you look at that and you have that thick bit around the bottom there and you have an arch around the top that is a tremendously strong structure people very often send us in pictures of their cellar wall the water is seeping in the bottom there very often they might have a cellar wall with a load of ground behind it and if the ground is there and the water table is going up and down as it rains it's going up and down so even though that's not a river that's water that is actually in the soil so it's pressing against the wall and it's finding weak spots in the wall and they might have water squirting through the wall in various places or they might just have damp and they try to hold it back by doing something on the inside which you can do to a certain extent if you can get good adhesion there but far better if you can is to put your barrier on the outside there and try to resist it that way but of course when you've got something like a hill behind it the pressure of water pushing down there is forcing water through here it's not the volume of water behind it's the height people very often say oh well what i'm going to do here is put a french drain in there to drain that water away and that works to a certain extent provided you can find somewhere to drain the water to but in actual fact if you are doing a French drain which by the way is nothing to do with a French it was a civil engineer called Mr French now not a lot of people know that so you're better off putting your French drain away from the wall because what very often happens you put a French drain there and all that does is makes an easy path for the water you haven't relieved the pressure on that wall and all you've done is made an easy route for that water to flood in at the base of your wall and come through at that point there so better there and that would mean that you've got a good solid mound of earth that side of the french drain you don't necessarily want pea shingle that side of the french drain because although you've got water coming down here trying to find its way away when it hits that you really want it to go here so again if you could put a membrane down the wall poking away that way you would have the best of both worlds and i did it in my cellar and it's worked extremely well indeed i put a pump in there as well and the pump has never ever switched on so i hope that helps and if you've got a flood problem in your cellar that may give you some idea of what's going on there and if you have and you want a little bit of help deciding what to do then we are in touch with the experts which are safeguard europe and they've got lots of solutions for keeping cellars warm and dry and if you like the video then give it a like because the more likes we get the more views we're likely to get and i'm not going with my begging bowl because quite frankly if i have to beg forget it so i hope you found that interesting and useful but i would say that the takeaway from this is look very carefully when you're going to buy a house 
what the flood situation is because it can make your life miserable as many people know. So just as a final thing I would like to ask you which do you prefer that American word levy or do you prefer dike? I drove my Chevy to the dike doesn't sound very good does it? I rode my bike to the dike that sounds perfectly okay doesn't it? In fact I think I'll copyright that. I rode my bike to the dike but the dike was dry.